Welcome back everyone for the second video of this walkthrough series for Red Rope Don't Fall Behind Plus. Again, we have Player 2 and I completing now House of Summer for this video. And before we get things started, make sure when you enter this house that your rope is reduced all the way. To get rid of your rope, you must press the L or R buttons and stand close to your partner. As we already have encountered in the House of Spring, sometimes having a longer rope is a liability. With the House of Summer, we're going to have issues with hands that try to pull you into the ground. I'm just going to call them quicksand spots. I'm going to mark these quicksand spots on the map so that you're always aware of where they are. I don't believe I have marked every single one, so still walk carefully in this area. If you do happen to fall in one of these quicksand spots, just make sure that the other person runs in the opposite direction. They are able to pull you out if you're able to get a set distance away. This is where having a long rope is dangerous, and having the short rope will make it easier to escape. As you see from this room, it's the exact same as ones you experience in the House of Spring, other than the quicksand spots. Destroy the tombstone, then destroy the ghosts. For this room, I actually don't think there are any quicksand spots, so you can move around freely as you want. You're now introduced to a new mechanic with these switches. Notice the plus sign on all of them. These indicate that all of them must be pressed down in order to create an effect. In this case, these are timed buttons, so you need to run across all of them in order to get rid of the force field and take out the headstone at the end. We're not able to get to our key at this point. You see them at the bottom of the screen, and this will be one of the last keys we actually grab. The room above us will take some finesse to activate all the switches. While we are in this room, let's go over some additional strategies. One thing that player two and I unintentionally did was designate a leader. I'm generally the pushy type, so I was designated the leader in the sense that I will choose where we go, and I will often initiate the attacks. I don't think you have to do this. But if it would help, you two can create this leadership deal so that one person is able to guide the overall movement. Of course, you two can share the leader role. You don't have to do it the entire game. It's up to your preferences. Just remember to not get too bossy, otherwise you're not going to have a friend to play this game with. We now get to a little tricky area right here where we have switches that help us go up and down the levels. Now to my knowledge, the only quicksand areas are in that inner circle you see around the water and on top of the ledge directly above us. For this level, you want to loop around the right side up to the top and then drop into the water. Go ahead and kill the two zombies in the water. We didn't, but go ahead and do that. Then both of you will get on the path that has the button. One of you will cross while one of you stays on the ground. You work together to move across to the left side all the way over to the next red button. Once you press the button on the left side, the second player is able to get up as well. The two of you will move to the middle portion at the bottom and extend the elevator up. This allows you to kill the skeleton and make your way all the way up 
towards the upper left button. You can go to the right side as well, it doesn't really matter, it just depends on which room you want to enter. So take some time in maneuvering to work out, otherwise the room is pretty easy to navigate. Just make sure that neither of you fall into the quicksand trap, and if you do, just make sure your partner runs away as quickly as possible. There should be only one quicksand spot in this room. There may be others, but I died to the one quicksand spot in my previous run and I hate it. This stage is less tricky than it looks to be. There are a crap ton of ghosts in the middle, which makes this level a little scary. However, just remind yourself that they're typical ghosts. You just need to pass your rope over them in order to kill them. Before you enter the Pit of Madness, a good idea is to get as close to the tombstone at the top as possible. That way you can break it and then immediately dispatch all of the ghosts around it. Once you have dispatched the ghosts and the zombie on the right, you can choose wherever you want to leave. We decide to go on the right. There are quicksand spots aplenty in this room, so tread carefully as you navigate it. You basically have a bunch of ghosts and four zombies in the middle. There are statues with buttons on the side, but you don't really need to worry about them like we did until the very end. Focus on killing anything in the room. There are no gravestones, so when you kill a ghost, they're gone for good. It is easy to get greedy with this stage, so be patient as you kill all of them, especially the four zombies in the middle. Once you have cleared everything in the room, you can go ahead and move the statues onto each of the buttons. As you see, we're going to have to enter the room from a different entrance in order to get that bronze key. Don't worry, because all the enemies have been killed, those statues will remain in the same spot. One other quick tidbit to give you at this time is that your characters actually can bump into each other. Most of the time you won't do this, you can pass through each other pretty easily, but there's like a thin sliver of pixel where you can stop each other dead. This will be relevant in some future situations, but for now, just pay attention to if you're running and occupying the same spot. If you're occupying the same spot while you're running, both of you will be slower. This can also occur when you're pushing a statue. In order to go faster, just separate and keep moving forward.
In this room you will see how to correctly save your partner if they get stuck in a quicksand trap. By now you've learned a lot of the techniques needed in order to succeed in this game. This is probably the first review room we have. Just watch out for all the hands and make sure that you kill all the enemies. There's a hidden skeleton at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to grab that as well. If we want to be super cautious, just remember that you're slower when you are in the water. There is a lot going on in this room. We have two zombies on either island, we can call them, and we have two tombstones, one at the top, one at the bottom. The buttons really don't matter at this beginning part. All they do is raise those platforms so that it creates a continuous circle around the stage. The biggest thing is just navigating so that you get on top of these elevated platforms and destroy those tombstones without being sucked into the quicksand spots. When you're first playing this stage, I would recommend that you kill the zombies first. You'll likely die trying to get through the ghosts, and so if you can get the zombies, at least they're going to be gone through later tries. By now you've seen through the videos that the best way to dodge ghosts is usually by going the long way around everything. Once you clear those two tombstones, you're going to exit out of the room to your right. You know this room already, you have to do the whole switch thing again to get to the other side of this room, which is a pain in the butt, but at least you know where all the hands are going to be, so watch out for them. We want to go again to the right.
This room is a massive pain in the rear. Not necessarily because of the enemies though. Biggest issue with the stage are all the yellow buttons you see right here. We're going to get to that later. Again, you want to clear out the room before you do anything. There are no quicksand spots to worry about, so kill freely. If you have a longer rope, the way to kill these zombies is to get on either side of the raised platform above them. Once you do that, drop down and do a pincer attack around them. Again, you want at least one section length of rope on the bottom in order to execute that attack. Otherwise, you have two tombstones, clear those quickly, and then you can get rid of the ghosts. Now this next part's a pain in the butt, so watch carefully how player two and I do it. One of you is going to have to be up top, and the way to get up top is to put somebody on the raised platform and hit the red button. Once you get off the red button, the platform will go down again. You two then need to work together to hit every single yellow switch on one side. You'll see us do it right here, going up and to the right. Again, it's much easier for you to watch it rather than have me explain it. We're going up and to the right this time, or you can go up and to the left either way, so that we can go back and get that bronze key that we missed out on. As we go after the bronze key, which takes us a while, you'll see how not to avoid one of the quicksand spots. Once you have the key, you can go back down to the room that we were just in. In this room, you can see that player two and I are trying to go to the bottom right. If you don't want to do either side, just go ahead and do the bottom left. That's what you really need to do in order to get the bronze key in the room below us. Now that we have that file bronze key, now we just have to escape the house. You can go out the entrance the way we came in, or you can follow us all the way back to the area that had those two tombstones, one above, one below, and exit at the bottom in order to leave the house on a balcony that has two extra skeletons.
And that is the House of Summer. Congratulate yourself for completing the second house. Next time, we'll go into the House of Autumn. Remember, you do not need to create a checkpoint at this time if you don't want to. The game saves automatically. If you want to be able to restart at this position, maybe because you have very few lives, go ahead and make that checkpoint. Otherwise, until our next video, well, bye.